Well, since none of the gauges worked on the pontoon boat, we decided to use a multifunction display. We chose the Cruise 9 from Simrad because it had a bunch of different features and it was priced pretty attractively. I'm going to take some of the stuff out of the box here so you can see what comes with it and what doesn't. It might surprise you. Well, of course, it has the instruction manual and then the cables. That's the cable for the sonar transducer. Uh, it has a bracket to surface mount it, but we're actually going to install it into the console in a flush mount configuration. Uh, they give you all the essential cables that you need. There's a power cable in there and then the unit itself, which is pretty nice. It's kind of streamlined and it's got a nine inch display so it will fit on our console which we don't have a whole lot of room there and it has like a uh, knob that you can turn and then push to click to access the different features. Like I said we chose to flush mount it so it's going to sit in a recess on that lip there and instead of using the bracket to surface mount it it's going to be a cleaner installation and less likely to get broken. There's the power cable it just plugs into the back of it. The box also had a bunch of little brown envelopes that were sealed shut that had different hardware in them. This particular one here has the knobs to connect the multifunction display to the bracket. This is a fused link to connect the power and then that's the stainless steel mount for the transducer that goes on the back of the boat. I believe this is the hardware to mount the transducer. And then once the multifunction display is fastened into the console, there are little trim pieces that snap over the four corners that just hide the screw holes, so it's just a little cosmetic trim piece. This little envelope actually came from the installation kit it has four screws in it and let me tell you more about the installation kit in just a minute in order to mount this and then you would think that you need to cover it up you have to buy the cover the cover is forty dollars which is ridiculous it should come with the cover just like all the other ones do but you get this plastic cover that says simrad and has the little molded piece where the knob goes and it fits into place and you have to buy that for forty dollars extra. If that wasn't bad enough, in order to install it you have to get a mounting kit. The mounting kit costs forty dollars also. And wait till you see what's in this. In addition to those four little screws in a envelope, you also get something very necessary. Another envelope and inside of it is an adhesive gasket. That is the mounting kit. Four screws and a rubber gasket for $40. I think that's ridiculous. They should include all that with the any of the products that they put together, but you shouldn't have to buy a cover and you shouldn't have to buy a mounting kit to install it. It also came with the instructions and it has a template which you cut out and tape into place you know, so it shows you where to make your cut to install it. But still, I think that's ridiculous. That's just my opinion. But I sent an email to Simrad, and uh, it went unanswered. After compounding and polishing the old console, I got it looking pretty good again, and then marked where the switch panel and the multifunction display are going to go. Before I drill into any type of gel coat, I always use a countersink first to keep the gel coat from cracking. And this kind of shows the locations of where you drill to start the saw. In this case, I'm going to use a vibrating oscillating multi-tool, which comes in handy for lots of things. But the blades can get kind of expensive. I found a box of them on Amazon. I don't remember how much they were, but they were not much more than buying a single blade, and I got a whole bunch of them. If I can find a link, I'll put it in the description below. It's always good to start with a new blade. Thank you. 
I decided to finish up the cuts with a Dremel tool. I put a sanding drum on the end of the Dremel tool just to smooth out the opening. I got everything wiped off and then with a little bit of finesse everything fit right in. Next, I have to cut out the opening for the switch panel. I had a custom switch panel made by New Wire Marine. They did the one on our other boat, UCO, and they did an awesome job. Finally, I'll pre-drill the holes and use some marine silicone sealant and finish the installation. We're making progress bit by bit. Thank you for watching and consider subscribing. I really appreciate it.